Hello everyone and welcome to the Ninja Trader webinar room. My name is Justin and I would like to welcome you to today's Ninja Trader 8 Charting 101 event. Before we get started, I'd like to perform a quick test of audio and visual. So if you can hear my voice and see the projection on your screen, please enter a Y into the chat room now. Alright, looks like we're coming through loud and clear. So real quick, it is important to understand that there are substantial risks in trading commodity futures contracts. You should carefully consider whether such trading is suitable for you and will depend on your specific circumstance and financial resources. It is possible to lose all the funds deposited to your broker and could even incur losses beyond these amounts. For more information, please inquire at brokerage support at ninjastrader.com or for a copy of the full CFTC Forest Disclosure. Also, please remember that these training webinars are not a solicitation nor recommendation but simply educational in nature. So as mentioned, today is going to be our Charting 101 webinar. We're going to be going over some basic details on how to create a chart, use preloaded NinjaTrader tools, work on chart optimization, and we'll have the opportunity for some live questions and answers in the room here today. Um, of course, as we uh, proceed forward, I'm going to attempt to get to all the questions, or rather I will get to all the questions that you enter into the room. Um, I will just attempt to answer these as we get to pauses within the webinar, unless it's a quick and easy question. Um, also, if we could keep any questions on topic, that would make sure we can get through all of our content today and make things a lot easier for everyone. Now, as mentioned, we're going to be using NinjaTrader 8 in today's webinar. And in NinjaTrader 8, we have added over 500 user-driven enhancements, which include charting, new alert systems, features, Superdome, uh, additional Superdome features, and more. Um, of course, NinjaTrader is a free application for advanced charting, market analytics, automated strategy development, and trade simulation. We only charge for a product if and when you decide to trade light on the NinjaTrader platform. Also, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Facebook for exclusive market commentary, updates on contract expirations, rollover dates, and more. Additionally, the NinjaTrader blog is your home for all things NinjaTrader and can be found at ninjatrader.com slash blog. And I'm going to go ahead and enter some of these links into the room for you now in case you need those for future use. All right, so that kind of brings us up to date here. Now let's go ahead and I'm just going to immediately switch over to my second monitor and we'll get started. Okay, so now you should be able to see my background here as well as the control center in the bottom right hand corner. Right off the bat, we're just going to go ahead and start by creating a basic chart. So, in order to do that on NinjaTrader 8, we're going to come over here to New. I'm going to left click on that, scroll up to Chart, and then left click there. This is going to bring up our data series selection menu. Now, our data series selection menu is what will actually allow us to add instruments to the charts and customize those before we actually create the chart. In order to do so, Anything that you want added to your chart should be in the Applied section. As you can see, it's currently blank, meaning nothing is going to be added in. To add our instruments, we have our instrument selection window up top here. There's a few different ways you can get those added in. Possibly one of the easiest is by using this drop-down arrow. This is going to drop down not only a list of available instruments that have been, been, that have been pre built into the, the platform, but also any current or recent instruments that you've been using through your trading. So as you can see, ES1216 or E-mini S&P is going to be right up top, and that's actually what we're going to be using today. However, I also want to cover a couple other ways that you can search those. Additionally, if you click within the box itself, you can simply type in the, con or the instrument you're looking for, as well as the contract expiry, hit enter, and it'll pop up right in the applied window. And last, we also have this search icon here. If you click on the search icon, It'll bring up the entire list of available instruments in NinjaTrader. Say, obviously, we already know we're looking for ES, so I'm going to search ES here. That's going to bring up all possible results. We have ES futures for E-mini S&P. That's what I'm going to use, so I'm going to double-click there. Pops up in the top window. Just hit Enter, and it'll be added to the chart. So those are your basic ways to actually add in an instrument. Now let's go over some of the details as far as customization. 
Um, starting off over here on the right hand side is where your customization options will come into play. You may have noticed that these do not appear unless you already have the data series added in. So right off on top here is going to be our price based on. We have of course the options ask, bid, and last. The type of chart which we are currently set to a minute chart and then the value. Now with the minute chart there's of course numerous different other types of charts that we offer. Tick, volume, range, uh, day, week, month. Others as well. Now, our value can change depending on what type of chart we're going to be using. Currently, since we're on a minute chart, and that's what we're going to be sticking with, the value just represents the number of minutes the chart's going to be for. So I'm going to set that to five, and we'll make it a five minute chart. Down below here is going to be our time frame, which initially starts off with load data based on. Now, this is just going to predetermine the amount of historical data you load to your chart. Currently, we have it set to five. Say if you wanted to have two months worth data, of course you could set that to 60 or however many you're looking for. Currently five looks good for me on that, so we're going to leave that as is. Then below that you have your trading hours. Now this is where you can set what's called a session template. Um, also, this is how your platform will know when the markets are going to be opened and closed for the specific instrument. You can always keep that as instrument settings as the default or what's very common and popular as well as setting it to default 24-7 to make sure you're getting data all the time for that specific instrument. Below that we have our chart style. Candlestick is what we're going to be using for this example. Of course we do have additionals for Box, Kagi line, line on close, mountain, open high low close, open close, and then point and figure are our primary chart types. We also have the ability to customize the width of those of the candlesticks, change the outline, the wick, color for down and up bars. Now one thing I want to mention here real quick, you may see that you have candle body outline, but there's not really any additional customization options. Anytime you see a right facing arrow beside a highlighted item, if you click on that arrow, it'll drop down additional customization options. So pretty simply, if you see a right arrow, there's more you can do with that feature. Moving down from there, we have some basic visual options, auto scale, center price on scale, as well as some other features there. You can also label your chart so you can enter whatever name you would like it to be here. Say if I wanted to just name it ES instead of ES1216, I would delete that out and that will just make sure the chart displays ES. We, have, we do have some additional options in here such as panel. We will be going over this a little bit more so later. But let's go ahead and hop down here to one of our more commonly seen questions is how to remove the trade executions from your chart. If you've done some trading on, on the platform before, you've probably noticed that when you place a trade, you have trade markers that show up on your chart. If you ever want to get these removed from your chart, you'd come down here to plot executions. By default, it's set to text and marker. You can always change that to do not plot or markers only to make sure it cleans up the chart a little bit. We're not actually going to be placing any trades today, so I'll leave that as is. And that covers the basics of uh, your chart creation. Now. I'm actually going to go ahead and click OK, and that's going to create this chart. That did create in my secondary monitor, so bear with me. I'm going to drag that over, which brings me to another point here. Any chart or window with a NinjaTrader acts just like any other basic Windows function, meaning you have the ability to resize and move all of your charts and windows through NinjaTrader. So to move it, just like any other window that you'd use, maybe an internet browser, you just come up to the top of the chart itself, click and hold, and then wherever you drag your mouse, the chart will follow. Additionally, you can resize your chart by hovering over next to one of the corners. You should get a double arrow icon for your cursor. Click and hold when you see that double arrow icon, and then you can, of course, rescale your chart to fit the screen a little bit more appropriately. All right. So that looks good. Um, I want to go over here uh, or go over a few different items on the chart. Starting off, as you can th see, top left hand corner it shows ES1216 or the current data series we have selected. Pretty quickly and easily we can use this to drop down the menu, select any other type of uh, instrument that we're going to be using and instantly select and switch to those. So as an example, let me just switch to the FDAX here and as you can see it instantly switches over. So nice and convenient. 
Additionally, you do have the search bar besides that, so you can actually search individual instruments if it's not listed on those lists. Besides that, we have our time or the type of chart that we're looking at. So we have minute, second, range, tick, volume, day, week, month, year. You can also configure additional options by clicking on the configure button. Then you can come in here and actually add different intervals, different values, whatever you would like to as you see fit. Next besides that we have our chart style. So as previously our chart style is just going to be, allow us to change from candlestick to box, mountain, whatever we would like to see here. Um, so if I quickly click on box we now have a box type chart instead. Except for, for this I'm going to stick with a candlestick as that's what we're going to be using in this. And I just see a comment in here for, from Taurus. Um, is that the audio or the visual keeps going in and out? And if anyone else is experiencing this, please do let us know. All right. Besides our chart style is going to be our drawing tools. This one's pretty easy to remember as it is shaped like a pencil. Um, by clicking on that, it's going to drop down our menu to give us multiple different drawing tool options, whatever you need for your charting. Next up, we have our zoom in feature. By clicking on the zoom in button, we are going to get a different cursor on the chart itself. It's actually going to look like a crosshair. When you click and drag, or click and hold rather and drag, you're going to get a selection window that when you release the click, it's going to zoom into that specific window. Now, pr pretty easily in order to undo that, just click on zoom out and it'll resume to how it was displayed previously. Besides that, we have our crosshair feature. Now, our crosshair feature is Basically, just the cursor that you're looking at. Currently, have it set to a standard pointer, but we also have a standard local crosshair, global crosshair, and then global time no scroll. Now, for the global and global time no time scroll, those ones are actually covered a little bit more in depth in our charting 201 webinar, so I'm not going to cover those, but our local crosshair, that is one of our more handy tools in my opinion, because if at any specific time you want to find out when a bar occurred, but you can't really tell exactly based off the X and Y axis uh, what that price is of that bar, using the crosshair will show on the X and Y axis the time and the exact price of where your crosshair is centered. So it makes it a little bit more easy to find exactly what you're looking at. I'm going to switch this back to a standard cursor here. Besides that, we have our data box. Now, our data box, once again, is another one of our more handy tools, as this shows a whole bunch of information from our chart, uh, including another one of our more handy tools, as this shows a whole bunch of information from our chart, uh, including time, price, open, high, low, close, and volume. And as you can see, that does update real time, so it's very handy to have open. Um, additionally, this window defaults to what's called always on top. Now always on top is a feature that makes sure that no window can be placed on top. By right clicking within this window, you can deselect this so that you can place a window on top here. To show you what I mean, if I currently try to take this chart and drag it on top of the data box, instead it slides right beneath. To undo that, right click, select always on top. That will make sure that there is no check mark and then you should be able to just slide right on top as so. And we're not going to be using this any further in this presentation, so I'm going to close this out. However, as a note, always on top is a feature available with any window here in IndiaTrader. So to right click within the chart, I can also scroll down here to always on top and then select that if I wanted to make sure one of my charts is always going to be displayed for me. Um, you may also notice in this menu, we have pretty much every other function available at the top of the chart, as well as some additionals, your instruments, your intervals, um, data series, um, but we'll go over that, of course, a little bit later. Next up on the top of the chart is going to be our chart trader function. Now, this is one of our more commonly used tools, as this is what will actually allow you to trade from within the chart. By clicking, you have the ability to do chart trader or chart trader hidden. Chart Trader will just show up the order window on the right hand side and will also allow you to place trades within the chart by right clicking and then of course you have these additional buy and sell options here. Um, once you select Chart Trader Hidden, that will shrink that down so you don't have that obtrusive window over to the side but you can still place trades by right clicking within the chart. 
And I'm going to turn that off for now as we're not going to be using that any further. Next up we have our data series button. Now this will just get you straight into that initial configuration menu that we set up our chart with. So to give you an example, by clicking on that, we now have the initial data series menu that we use to add the data series or rather the instrument into the chart and customize those options. Next up we have our indicators. Indicators will just pop up our indicator selection menu and we're going to go over this again here shortly but for now we're going to leave everything as is. Our strategies window. Now strategies windows if you're going to be using any fully automated strategies, anything that you've implemented yourself or possibly have gotten from a, a third-party developer, that's where you can locate these. And lastly, on top is our properties menu. Properties, of course, is going to allow us to configure some option and change some settings of the chart visually as well as some additionals. So, since we got that in place here, I actually do want to go into our properties menu. So I will normally click on properties here or as previously mentioned if I right click within the chart I can go down to properties at the very bottom of this selection menu and that pulls up our properties window so for now um, some of these other options I'm going to be going over here later but for now I'm actually just wanting to change the background of the chart so if I'm going to come down here to colors chart background it's currently set to a slate gray I think for now I'm actually going to change this to a dark olive green. So scroll down on this menu, find our green section and then we have dark olive green right here. So I'm just going to click on that and that's going to show up right here. Now as you probably notice it's not actually applied to the chart quite yet. We're still seeing that black background. You can apply it in two different ways. By clicking OK it'll close out of this window and instantly apply it to the chart. Or if I click apply, it will be applied, but if, say if I didn't like the color, I could go back in and select a different one without having to worry about getting back into the properties menu. So everything actually on here looks pretty good, so I believe that's as I want it to be set. Um, as mentioned, I will go over some of these additional options in here. However, down here at the bottom, you see window always on top is also selectable from within this this menu as well you have some basic options up top uh, your margins a chart trader you can turn on and turn off from this from the properties menu as well as well as some other features all right so that looks good um, in case I ever want to use this chart setup for future charts, I can always save this as a template. In order to do that, you would right click within your chart, come down here to find templates, and click save as. And since this is our dark olive green, I'm just going to call it dark olive. After you've named it whatever you would like to, just click Save, and that'll save that template. This way, I can apply it to any future charts without having to recreate anything that I've set here. All right, so that covers the first chart that we're going to be creating. Um, as we've reached this phase, I want to actually throw a poll into the room, and that is, how do you open a chart? Your first option is going to be Tools, Instruments. Second option is Workspaces, New. Third option is New, Chart. And then your fourth option is going to be Right Click in the Orders tab. All right, looks like we've got a bunch of answers in here. I'm actually going to stop that poll. It looks like everyone who answered got that right. And the correct answer is going to be number three, new chart. So I'm going to close out of that and we'll continue on to our next chart. Now our next chart, one feature that we have that's different from NinjaTrader 7, if you've had experience with NinjaTrader 7, is the ability to add in a tab instead of create separate windows for each chart. What I mean is that in NinjaTrader 7 you would have to create a whole new window to create a new chart. 
in Industrator 8, you have the plus button down here that works just like an internet browser tab setting. By clicking on the plus, it'll pull up our data series selection menu. From here, we'll be able to add in a new chart. So, with this, I'm going to go ahead and once again we'll do an E-mini SMP chart. So I'll select ES from our recently li uh, used list. It's going to populate our customization options here. And for this one, I do want to load up the different template that I saved here. So in order to load up a template that you previously previously saved up in the right top right hand corner you see load template only currently it's set to none if I use the drop down arrow I can select dark all of green and that will allow me to load up the current template I have saved however for this one we're actually going to be making this chart look a little bit differently than we did previously so I'm going to set that back to none I'm going to set this to a five minute chart Number of days to load, we're going to set to 60. And then we'll click OK to create that chart. All right, so as you can see, we have now a duplicate chart here, except for I don't really want to have the same type of chart for the same, uh, for the same interval, so I actually want to change this chart type around. Um, I'm going to change this to a mountain chart, and that can be done by the chart style button here. Scroll down to mountain, and I'm going to click on that to change this to a mountain type chart. Additionally on this, that gray on black, it's kind of hard for me to see. I have, I have some problems seeing that kind of uh, slight color variation, so I want to change the color on this chart as well. So I'm going to click on the data series. I'm going to right click and go to properties. And on the right hand side we can see chart style is currently set to mountain and the color is dim gray. I actually want to change that to a say a medium blue, make things a little bit easier for me to see. So we'll scroll down to medium blue, left click there to select, and I'm going to click OK to apply. Alright, to me that looks a lot better. So our next option as previously mentioned, we're going to be covering indicators. So this seems like a good opportunity to add an indicator to our chart. So there's the indicators button up here we can use, or by right-clicking within the chart, we can simply go to indicators. Additionally, this right-click menu will show you any hotkeys to get to certain chart or to, to certain uh, NinjaTrader windows. Uh, you can also use Control-I, but that's if you're uh, more familiar with the, the platform or if you're familiar with using hotkeys, something you can do. Otherwise, I'm happy to just stick with clicking on the indicators. All right, so we have our indicators menu pulled up. On the left-hand side, this is where you're going to find your selections. Just kind of like how you set up your data series, anything that you want to appear on the chart must be under the configured heading. As there's currently nothing in the configured heading, it's not going to be added to the chart. So let's go ahead and find an a EMA, or Exponential Moving Average. Let's scroll down here. Everything is listed alphabetically to make things a bit easier. And you can highlight it and click Add to add it to the chart or you can simply double click and it'll add it to this bottom configured section. I also want to change the period. The period on an EMA is just how the or it, it just calculates the EMA based off the number of bars. So currently it's set to 14 or it, it just calculates the EMA based off the number of bars. So currently it's set to 14. I'm going to set this to 50. As this is a mountain type chart it is still going to work in the same way. It's just obviously going to be based a little bit differently instead of off bars. So we'll click OK to create this. And as you can see, we now have a EMA ranging across the chart. Additionally, though, say if I wanted to have an indicator on, I wanted to have it calculating data, but I just did not want it to, to display on the chart due to, you know, I, I find it to be kind of an eyesore. I could go back into the indicator properties and each of our indicators will have the option for visible this is going to be on the right hand side we have the option visible here is by default checked by unchecking this 
and I'm just going to click apply to preview this it will remove the visuals for the indicator from the chart but the indicator itself will still be there will still be active so you can continue to gather data or do what you need to do so I'm going to turn this back on click OK all right and additionally on this everything looks pretty good except for I want to change a couple other visual features primarily on the background I have these these vertical and horizontal lines on a standard chart I like that but on this mountain chart I kinda wanna clean that up so we're gonna go back to our properties menu I'm gonna scroll down here till we find lines now as mentioned the grid lines horizontal and grid lines vertical that's what we're looking for we'll click on the right facing arrow to get those additional customization options and I'm actually going to uncheck the visible option just like you would have in your indicators to make it so that those lines are no longer to where we can see them. So we'll click OK. That'll apply the change to the chart and that looks a lot better to me. It's nice and clean. Don't have those lines kind of clogging things up for me. All right, so a couple of features I wanted to go over here as well with this chart. Um, anytime you're looking to navigate your chart, you can either use your mouse wheel to look back in time or scroll back forward by going up or down on the mouse wheel. You can also click and drag in one direction or another. When you release the click, of course, it'll allow you to go back and readjust. But that will allow you to move forward and back as you see fit. Additionally, when you have moved your chart, you should see a right-facing arrow up at the top right-hand corner. This will bring you flush with the current data. So by clicking this, we will we are now right back up to our live feed. It makes things a little bit easier. Um, additionally, if you hold control and drag on the y-axis here, you can move the entire chart up and down. So if there's something outside of the boundaries of your chart you want to see, I can move this all the way up here. Um, just like moving back and forward in your chart, once you do that, you get this tiny little F up in the right-hand corner. F to me stands for focus. And that'll ex do, that's exactly what this will do. By clicking on this F, it'll bring our chart back into focus to where we should be. Last option I wanted to go over here as far as navigating your chart is the chart scaling. What that means is you can expand and contract whether it be the time or the price that you're viewing. Um, for an easy example, if I click and hold on the x-axis down here at the bottom and then drag it that's going to expand our time frames or rather at this point I guess it's more so contracting as we're seeing a shorter amount of time or we can see a larger amount by going in the other direction I'm going to change that back to how it was but it's an easy way to to view more or less data on the chart depending on how you want to see it with those out of the way I actually want to throw one more pull into the room here and this one is going to be just asking how we're doing, if we're good with the pace, if we need to speed up, slow down. All right, looks like our pace is good here. So with that, I also want to throw one more question in, and that is how can you access the indicators window? Option number one is right click in the background of the chart and select indicators. Option two is click on the indicators icon at the toolbar at the top of the chart window. Option three is pressing, con pressing the key command control I and then option four is all of the above. We'll give a couple moments for answers to come in here. All right, we'll go ahead and stop the poll. The correct answer is number four, all of the above. Kind of throwing a trick question at you this time. So I'm going to close that one out. Now let's move on to our third chart. Now for this one, we're going to create a whole new chart. So let me resize and move this one over so we have some room. And hopefully that bright white background doesn't blind you too much. But let's come back here to the control center. I'm going to click on New, and then Chart. This will make sure we do it in a separate window. So we have our data series selection menu, of course. This one we're going to create with a few more data series. So for the first one, we're actually going to use, say, a Forex instrument here. So let's go down to Forex, 
we have our preloaded list here, so I'm going to use an AUD USD. I'm going to set this to a five minute chart. And this one is currently set to a candlestick, which is where we want it. But let's go ahead and add one more AUD USD. We'll set this to a 15 minute. And for this one, we're actually going to set this to a box type chart. For this example, I also want to change the down and up bar colors. So currently we have it set to red and lime green. So by clicking on the downward arrow, we will have a drop up bar or a drop up menu, and we'll be able to find those colors in here. So I think for this one, instead of the red and green, I actually just want to have this a little bit easier on my eyes. We'll do a medium blue for the down bars. And then for the up bars, let's go ahead and do a cornflower blue. All right. I think that's all I want to set. But like I said, we're going to be doing this a little bit differently in a couple different ways. Not only are we going to be using the Forex instruments, um, but I also want to change how the chart displays. Normally, when you set multiple instruments to a chart, you'll get multiple windows laying on top of each other, rather multiple data series laying on top of each other. For an example of this, I'm just going to click OK. Our chart's going to create my secondary monitor again, so let me drag that over. And as you can see, by default, we have one chart up top, one chart down low. So no matter how you uh, set that up, you'll be able to see both of them. What I want to do is I actually want to plot these within the same window. So we'll go back to the data series. I'm going to right click, go back to data series here. And then for this second chart, this is where we're going to be making our changes. By scrolling down, we have panel. By default, any new chart is going to be added to a new panel. This first data series is already set to panel 1, so I'm actually going to change the second data series to panel 1 as well. I'm going to click OK to apply this, and that's going to combine them both into one panel. Now, as you can see, we have these big, thick blue bars that are overlaying on top of the candles. We can't really see those candlesticks. That's not going to do very well for us. What that's called is called the Z order. You can change the Z order or how these these charts display by clicking on the chart, or rather clicking on the data series. You'll get these tiny little circles that'll indicate you have in fact selected the data series. When you hold shift and then use the scroll wheel on your mouse, it's actually going to allow you to change how these are laid out. So currently it's set to one of two with the blue bars in front. I want to set this to level 2 of 2 to make sure we have those candlesticks in front. Alright, so that looks a lot better here. I also want to add an additional EMA to this chart. So let's go back to our indicator selection menu. We'll scroll down here to find our EMA. I'm going to highlight that and click Add. For now, the the period is fine, we're going to leave that as is, except for, for this one I actually want to change the visuals a little bit. Given we already have an EMA, for one I want to kind of change the color on this given we're get, using a different instrument. I also want to make it a little bit easier for me to see. This thin yellow line for this first EMA is kind of difficult on my eyes. So, let's drop this down. I'm actually going to select a red for this EMA. As well, I'm going to change the width of the EMA. Currently, it's set to 1. I'm going to make this 5 times bigger and set it to 5. And then we're going to click OK. And that's going to apply it to our chart. So as you can see, it's red. It's a lot thicker than our previous EMA. It's a lot easier to see. Um, last but not least, what I wanted to cover here is in case you ever have any missing data on your chart, say you've loaded up your charts and Ninja Traders either, you know, you, you shut it off for the night, when you pull it back up there might be some gaps. In order to fill in those gaps, you would right click in the chart and select reload all historical data. That's going to actually reload everything on the chart to make sure you're all up to date. Currently I don't believe this is going to make a change for us, but as an example, we'll click on that. It'll show loading in the top left hand corner. 
Charts already been refreshed at this point, went nice and quickly, but nothing changed as our data was already up to date. Um, as a note, in case you ever see this reload all historical data button grayed out, kind of like the zoom out is right here, that generally means there's some kind of issue with your connection to the data series, or not data series, I'm part, sorry, data provider, and or an internet connection problem. I would first check to make sure you're connected to your data provider. Beyond that, restart your modem, router, whatever you may have, check to see if that restores the connection. If it doesn't, please write into platform support at ninjatrader.com. We'll be happy to help further on that. All right, and one last thing here I wanted to cover is our merge policy. If you want to set a merge policy, you can always do so with a Ninja Trader, given we work with futures. Um, that can be done from our tools, options menu. Um, that can be done from our tools, options menu. And then if you go to market data, we have some multiple different data options here that you can change. Um, our merge policy, global merge policy is going to be under historical. It's currently set to merge back adjusted, which just means that it's going to merge any previous contract expiries up until this current contract, and uh, you're going to get all the data necessary. You can also set that also set that to do not merge or merge non-back adjusted. Of course, that all has to do with your specific preferences, whatever you want to do for your trading, but that's how you would access your merge policy. So I'm going to click out of that. That actually brings us pretty much to the end of our webinar here. I'm going to open up the room for any uh, additional questions or comments. Um, we did go over a few different options here, creating charts, using some preloaded tools, chart optimization. If anyone has any other questions or concerns, if you don't have them now, please address any future questions to platform support at ninjatrader.com. We're always available and happy to help. Um, before we go, though, there's one last thing I want to show you with our chart. And that's going to be how to save your work. There's multiple different ways you can do that. You can either save your workspace, but I'm going to show you how to do so just upon closing the platform. I've spent all this time creating this, so I'm going to click on the red X in the top right hand corner. When I do so, that's going to pop up with our save workspace. Do you want to save workspace untitled one? Now I'm going to click yes here, but I also want to bring up before I do. Be careful when you're closing out of the platform, because if you click on the X at the top of any of your charts, it will close out of that chart. And if you have not saved your workspace, you will not be able to retrieve those. So just be cautious. Um, I'm going to click yes here as an example. That closes out of my platform. And I'm going to relaunch here just to show you what's going to happen. When we relaunch the platform, that is going to pull up with all of our workspaces, rather all of our charts set up just as we had previously laid them out, all the adjustments, customizations. That way you don't have to take an additional 10 to 15, 30 minutes to set up your charts and uh, do that every day. And I do see a question in here from Renee. Can I import my chart settings from NinjaTrader 7? Um, there are some chart settings such as historical data, things of that nature that can be imported. Unfortunately, due to the vast majority of differences between charts, or rather between the platforms, there are many, many features that will not be able to be moved over. Um, however, you will of course get the option when you initially install, if you haven't already done so, um, to import settings from NinjaTrader 7. Anything that can be moved over will, um, but like I said, most of your chart settings are probably going to be invalid. All right, I also see a comment in here from Taurus. I tried to export and import, did not work. Now, uh, by export and import, what exactly are you talking about? Is that gonna be for an indicator, uh, custom script? Uh, are you trying to export to Excel? Indicators. Um, if you, did you get any kind of, if you got any kind of error message on that, what I would suggest, it's definitely right into platform support at ninjatrader.com. Uh, there could be a couple different things causing that, possibly a script com conflict error um, and chart settings. Okay, yeah. Indicators and chart settings when you're importing from NinjaTrader 7 uh, kind of uh, along the same lines. Unfortunately, there's not too much that we can do to prevent some of these from uh, from failing out as the differences between the platforms are pretty substantial. Uh, a lot of our developers for indicators are still working on updating those indicators. Um, I would reach out to your third party developer to ask them if they have any new ones in place that you can implement into your chart. Most likely they'd have a completely separate download for you.
All right. So if any other, if anyone has any other questions, we still have a couple more moments here. Um, as a note, I wanted to bring up that we do have an additional presentation going over Forex today. So if you have any interest in that, please feel free to join us at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to understand a little bit more about the powerful Administrator Forex trading tools. Um, and uh, last but not least, I wish you all happy trading from all of us at NinjaTrader. Um, if you have any more concerns or questions, let us know. And uh, happy, have a happy rest of your day.